my stand broke so I'm literally using one hand to hold this light so I can record this video that is that is the level of commitment that I have for you guys Bruh. that really just didn't work out so we're just gonna record vertically and today we're talking about fungal acne you know those pesky little bumps that show up on your forehead is technically not even acne. So acne is caused by bacteria and fungal acne is actually Malassezia folliculitis. And so what the fuck is Malassezia folliculitis? It is essentially an overproduction of yeast on your face that causes these nasty flare-ups. And malassezia is just living on your face. There is nothing you can do to get rid of malassezia. But what you can do is control the overproduction of yeast that is appearing on your face and, you know, just causing these flare-ups that are so annoying. This is like mind-blowing for me because for the longest of times, I have been using antibacterial products thinking that they would be treating all the conditions and things and whatnot that was appearing on my face and that is not the case. So when you have fungal acne, malassezia folliculitis, you need to be working with products that have ingredients that are antifungal. And the cool thing about antifungal ingredients is that they sometimes have antibacterial properties. So you're kind of getting a two for one special there. So kind of let's get more into what exactly is causing malassezia folliculitis and you know what you may be experiencing so again if you see fine bumps or clusters of bumps that don't have a pulse uh, a pus in it they are more than likely malassezia folliculitis if you have dandruff you are more than likely experiencing it and may be prone to it i know i am which is so frustrating Thank you, genetics. If you live in warm climates, you may also be experiencing this as well. So you really want to just focus on the things that are in your control. So what's in your control? Your diet. So making sure that you are not in intaking a lot of sugar, carbs, because sugar is like literally the feeder of yeast. Like it will literally create like massive amount of yeast in your in your body so you definitely want to cut out sugar i know carbs is hard but like process of elimination guys like cut out sugar sugar don't work cut out carbs and then if carbs don't work cut out dairy and then you know i mean live on i'm not gonna say that anyway and then so the second thing that you want to try is taking a probiotic probiotic helps to increase good gut flora and when you have your insides working and in sync and whatnot that really really helps to just make sure that your skin flourishes so definitely take probiotics like it is by far the goat it helps with like managing like the overproduction of yeast in your body it is life-changing it is super super life-changing and the Third thing is just drinking water, which we all know, we gotta drink your water. It just helps to regulate um, things internally. Last thing is just getting some good old vitamin D, and I'm not talking about that, you nasty. I'm talking about going out in the sun. You definitely want to get some sun exposure as that helps to, uh, the UV radiation helps to kill fungus so definitely go out in the sun and so some of the things that you want to avoid right you definitely want to avoid ingredients that are high in lipids and fatty acids and esters specifically lipids and lipids are essentially oils you want to avoid oils like the plague and this is frustrating for me because I lean more dry and so I'm just like how am I going to moisturize my face and then lipids oils they're literally in every skincare product i'm like bruh what am i supposed to do what am i supposed to do now what am i supposed to do now anyway so yeah you want to avoid them so coconut oil shea butter i still don't understand how shea butter has a comedogenic rating of fucking two but that's neither here nor there avoid it you want to avoid like hydrolyzed wheat protein like just 
avoid a lot of shit. And so the easiest way to know what shit to avoid is going to folliculitisscout.com. I think I'm going to put it above my head because there's no space. And so yeah, go to folliculitisscout.com. It will literally save your life. You enter all of the ingredients that are in the products that you're using and then they tell you whether or not they're safe or not safe from malassezia folliculitis. And so if you know that you're experiencing this and you definitely want to kind of kickstart and get rid of it, you definitely want to go to this site. Okay, go to this site and like literally put those products in and it will change your life. And so for me, I realized that two of the products that were like my staple products were actually not helping and are not safe from malassezia folliculitis. And that was just like a mindfuck for me because I'm like, I trusted these brands with my skin and they were really not helping me. They were fucking on my skin. Oh my God. Okay, I'm trying not to get emotional. But anyway, so yeah, malassezia folliculitis is a beast because literally, there's so many ingredients that you have to avoid um, and you just want to make sure that you are using the right in ingredients that's going to help your skin flourish. So go to that site. It's super helpful and it will uh, kind of take the guesswork out of this process. And so, yeah, I think for me, it helped me also realized that I had to switch my diet and I'm at the point where I was kind of like you know what I'm a, I'm just reducing sugar and now I'm just like I'm gonna just eliminate the shit because it's just too much work it's too much work it's like you do you do all this to like get to a good place and then all of a sudden you have like all of these like things happening on your face and I'm just like I don't want any parts of this I don't want it. So I think I'm just eliminating it to the best of my ability, like seriously. And so I noticed when I was testing week three and week four that I noticed like these bumps on my forehead and I could not for the life of me figure out why week three looked better than week four, but my hyperpigmentation was looking better. I saw improvements there, but ultimately my whole skin just looked worse. And I'm pretty sure it was because of the malassezia, the malassezia. And I just want to give myself a pat on the back because that word is hard as fuck to remember. And yeah, I, I remembered it. I, I might be saying it correctly as much as I can. Anyway, so that is it. I hope this video was helpful. And yeah, so if you found this video helpful and you thought we dropped some gems, because we definitely dropped some gems in this video, make sure to bookmark this video and also leave a comment down below if you're experiencing fungal acne like I know I'm not alone in this which is why I recorded it and I really want this platform and this page to really help you throughout your skincare journey and just help you navigate it a little bit easier because it's, it's fucking hard like there's it's so much things and so much information and I'm just like it's information overload all the time and so I really want this to be a resource for you to help you you know, do it a little better. And so yeah, that's the end of the video. I hope this was helpful. Deuces!